Hey, welcome back at Brian at Team Aquascape. I'm sweating because it is so, so, so hot out here. And if it sounds like I'm complaining, it's because I am. <laughs> like, that's it. We're not complaining about this week's episode. This week's episode is so much fun. Chris and Ed, the pond professor, Trevor are out doing pond prep out there, getting ready for Tanner with Serpent Designs. Big build out there. I'm not sure what they're doing. Chris is going to take you all over that whole build. Maybe a little pond guy. I think a little bit of Trevor. In fact, speaking of Trevor, Trevor, I heard, is so inspired he's gonna actually come back from Tanner Serpa's and be working on some patio bowls inside of our retail store. We have a pond tour, the September 23rd. It's a daytime, nighttime tour. We have so much preparation getting ready for that. My house is on the nighttime tour, so there's a big party at my house. Mark the calendar, guys, if there's ever a reason to visit the Chicagoland area, it's September 23rd because of our pond tour. Can't wait to show you the progress here. Of course, we're still out here in like 400 degree temperatures. Like, I'm not kidding. We have hens set up behind us air-conditioned misters and everything and then yes I'm still complaining but I love my job <laughs> we are gonna build a pondless waterfall the best way to learn anything is to teach it we are rocking and rolling on this pond Well, while Brian and Jack are busy back in Chicagoland, I'm out here with Tanner Serpa Yo. back there. We have Tim Wood, one of the masters of our craft out here from the Pennsylvania area. And of course we have Ed Blue, and then there's Trevor way back there. So guys, what the heck are we doing out here? <laughs> Tanner, this is uh, your house, right? Yeah, this is my house. <laughs> uh, this is like three years in the works. Ed and I have been working on this for a while. It's originally gonna be at my previous house and then uh, now it's here. So we're just gonna make some type of swimming pond. We got a general idea of what we're gonna do, but things are always subject to change, so. Well, you had said when we first got here that we're going to turn your house into a home, which yeah. the pond guy likes to say. Yeah. And, and of course, you bring in Ed and of course, the famous Tim Wood. So yes. what do we have going on here that Trevor and I are out here helping you guys? So what we're doing, we have a pond that's going to be approximately 28 feet long, 18 feet wide, which is going to be the mini recreational pond. We're going down four feet. So we're going down a little bit deeper than normal. We're also going to create some little ledges and things like that for different types of aquatic plants because Tanner is going to want to plant everything up, not on the inside pond, but also outside. We also want to take advantage of that beautiful slope that is right behind behind me. So right on the other side of us is the main window in the home. So you have this beautiful vista coming right through the middle of the house and it's going to be pointing right up that hillside. So we want to take and carve into that hillside a little bit because right now it's just a big flat slope coming down. We're going to carve into it. We're going to put in a wetland filtration system. And then when we were out with Tim, we picked out some amazing stone, like awesome, yeah, awesome nice. stuff, yeah. all covered in mosses and stuff like that. So we want to try to incorporate those into that hillside to create that naturalistic look that we all love. So Tim, you are Aquascape artist the year, but it's yep. Aquatic Edge, and you're actually close to this area, right? Yeah, uh, we work at the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh area all the time. Yep. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Tim's kind of the point person that you've been working with, Ed, which is a pretty custom thing when doing these out-of-town projects. It, there's no other way we would be able to pull it off, because he's got the connection for the stone. He's got the, the connections for the heavy equipment. Him and his team are here. They're used to digging in this soil. They know what we're going to hit, know what we're going to find. So leaning on him is critical to pulling off project of this magnitude. Awesome. Are you yeah. excited? I'm excited. We're going to hit something. <laughs> we always oh, no. do. <laughs> We always do. That's all right. Well, then Tim will be in the equipment. Trevor and I will be swinging pickaxes, figuring out whatever. Maybe we're going to find Jimmy Hoffa. We don't know. But we're going to have fun. We're going to start to build a really, really cool rec pond as part of an event out here later on this month. So in a few weeks, we're actually going to come back and finish this project up as part of something really, really cool. But let's go ahead and get digging and get things moving along, Eddie. I'm ready. All right, let's go. Let's go. So we are right in the middle of day two, Eddie, and you've been running around getting forks, like just logistically getting right. a bunch of stuff. And we had the pond virtually dug. We had to do some cleanup. We ran into some rain last night. Mm -hmm. A big thing that we focused on this morning was actually the slope right. behind you. Right. So explain kind of, I guess, what the challenge is up here. Yeah, so what we had was we have this big vertical slope coming down, which is great, obviously, for building a waterfall. But the challenge with it was the angles and stuff weren't working right. We also wanted to try to get rid of some of the soil that we were generating on the site. He has tons of room here. So we could easily get rid of it. But what we want to try to do was accentuate the hillside. So instead of just having this gentle slope coming down, we want to create some undulations and things like that. We're then going to cover all that with that natural sandstone. So what we want to try to replicate is what you find right here in this beautiful part of the country. So this section of Western Pennsylvania is just loaded with these hills and valleys and ravines and things like that. And it exposes that beautiful sandstone that's underlying everything. So what we're trying to do is kind of mimic that type of a look. So by regrading everything, putting in a series of terraces, 
we're then gonna come in and cover those terraces with big chunks of stone, and then we're gonna carve that waterfall system going in between everything. But the challenge is, because everything kind of sloped at almost a 45 degree angle back towards where the pond is, right. because of machine access, we had to build ourselves basically a catwalk up uh, here. Exactly, so we're gonna be able to position the machines on that ledge to set all the rocks on this back wall. Otherwise, we can't do it from this side without a massive excavator. But as you can see, we don't have room to bring in a massive excavator. Yeah. His driveway wouldn't handle a large excavator going down it. We would destroy all that stuff. So by thinking logistically, how are we going to position the pond? How are we gonna set up our equipment and machinery to be able to place these large rocks? Well, and it is. It's all about the right piece of equipment for the job. And actually, we have a 30 by 100 liner. 30 by 100. That's a heavy liner. It's about a thousand pounds. <laughs> so Maybe a hair over. we're gonna use the right piece of equipment for the job and we're gonna actually strap this thing up, put a pipe through it, and we're just gonna unroll this thing rather than unfold it and try and schlep it in here with just the four or five of us. <laughs> so it is all about the right equipment on the job. Know what thinking, bud. Know it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is gonna be fun to watch, so check out how we do this, and hopefully you guys are enjoying the episode. All right, so Trevor's over here putting the strap onto the bucket. We have it strapped up to this piece of inch and a half galvanized pipe. It's a 10-foot stick, so we ran it right through the middle so that when he lifts up, we're not going to break. Even though this is about a one-inch thick piece of cardboard tubing right there, it's not gonna rip through that cardboard tubing when he lifts up. It's gonna evenly disperse the weight of the liner along this steel pipe and hopefully allow us to easily kind of just unroll it while it still sits on the pipe up in the air. All right, Tim, you ready? Come out towards us. end of day two and we made really good progress today we got the entire hole cleaned up fabric liner fabric and then we actually started rocking in and building some of the infrastructure inside the pond so Ed and Trevor are up here figuring out where we're going to build another wall using this architectural stone or this block wall Tim what's the name of this wall Versa lock Versa lock yep and let me tell you guys and girls out there these suckers are heavy they're heavy they don't look like it but they're heavy concrete it is concrete <laughs> they're like 82 they're 82 pounds of brick or something like that pounds a cubic foot. yeah and that's bigger than a cubic foot Foot. Trust me, I'll show you later. What I love about this is, you've seen this in so many of the videos, is using this, this block wall inside the pond. It allows you to go straight down into these deep sections without really taking up a lot of volume in the pond. But what I think is actually even more cool is these large boulders kind of flanking out and kind of bookending the wall itself and framing it. And the reason they're so important is because you have other natural rock that's gonna be happening all over this pond. So it just ties everything together, really frames it out. It just looks so nice. We're gonna do a another wall just one course high back behind the top of this one for some of these big flat slab destination bouldery type stuff to sit on. It's very very cool. It allows you again to go very deep very quickly and because you're not always going to get these large thin stones that you can kind of stand up and occupy an entire edge of the pond. So just a nice way to do it. It looks fantastic. We're going to continue to rock. Another thing that happened today was Trevor and Tanner after lunch we got that intake bay area kind of roughed in. You can see our 12 small aqua blocks. We got our pump vault with a couple extensions in the back corner. This is that intake area, right? That's gonna be where the pumps are housed. There's a skimmer back there as well that will help with keeping all of that top water debris that gets pulled into that intake area, gets it into a catchment area, and will make it very easy for Tanner to empty that debris basket. So very, very cool. A lot of bells and whistles on this project, but we didn't have liner until just before lunch. So the fact that we got all this done the last half of the day is pretty impressive. I know you guys are amazed, as you always are, but I'm amazed at this guy right here. He's so awesome. So, Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Okay, bye. All right, guys, quick updates. Pond's been running now for about a week. Water clarity is like pristine. In fact, there's no way I'm not swimming in here in a little bit. Everything looks great. We're prepping for the pond up on top. I put deep rec wool. I'll swing you up there really quick. But before I get up there or on my way up there, I wanted to take this time and do a quick shout out to all of the Garden Answer followers that came over to check us out at Team Aqua Shape. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your comments might really really motivates us and keeps us going so thanks so much this is our pond area i'm not super excited on the way these walls are turning out but i knew i wouldn't be we have to go five feet deep off of this thing there's going to be a deck that actually cantilevers out over that wall this wall kind of comes back and does these steps and stuff in through here and then we're going to come over the top of it with some big monster boulders so it all ties in with everything else that we've been doing in here it was so much faster so much easier for us just to come 
straight up and down with this wall stone and then put a decorative cap on the top rather than trying to stack boulders five foot, six foot tall. We'd literally have to go over six feet tall with the rocks. And the other challenge with that, a six foot tall rock takes up an enormous amount of space. So we'd start losing a lot of real estate in the pond. This allows us to keep the real estate in the pond. Keep really it's 16 feet from here to here and about nine feet from there to over there. So we'll keep updating you with the progress and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this build because it is awesome. And thanks again to all you Garden Answer followers and everybody else that's been following us for years, really. Like I know there's a bunch of you guys out there. Every week you comment and I really, really appreciate you guys out there. In fact, next week, I'm gonna pick out a few of you guys. Maybe do something nice for you. Keep commenting, keep supporting us, keep doing stuff. I'm hot, like this hot. I'm gonna come down yep. a little bit and then if you can get it over both sides of the thumb, yep. if possible. Alright, we are unstrapping this rock. We knew it was going to be pushing the limit as soon as we started moving it from the stockpile to here. We dropped the bucket, we tried to figure out if we could save a little bit of weight, but um, the mechanics are, are not working, plus the distance that has to go all the way out. So we were struggling just picking it up. Now, we were trying to put it in to keep progress moving forward. By putting in that big rock, it would allow us to put in like two or three more on this top edge. But it gets to that point where it's taken us two hours, you know, to do that and move this and try to position it and everything. The machine is struggling. So we have a larger machine coming, but it's not coming for a week and a half. So what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to call it. We're going to have to wait because it's safety. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want to compromise the structure itself, damaging the rubber membrane or right next to the house. I mean, there's a whole list of things that if it goes bad, it can go really, really bad. We'll wait. We'll do what we can with what we have. We'll go from there. I mean, and honestly, you know, when we first started here on Monday, I didn't think we were going to get any of these big rocks in on the top edge. So I think we're ahead of the game. So at this point, this is all bonus material for us so to pull the plug on it at this point is very very easy because i'm like i think we're in a very good safe place to still reach our deadline so we're gonna go ahead and keep moving just not with this particular boulder so good little lesson for you guys to see out there it's not all sunshines and rainbows and <laughs> unicorn waterfalls and what stuff you mean? It is. Also, that's right <laughs> sunshine rainbows unicorns and sometimes rocks that you can't set Tanner, what do you think anything creative that you're trying to do it's always riddled with issues yeah i mean it happens to me all the time with even the small projects and i try to show it as much as i can on the channel but a lot of times I just don't even film it, move on from yes. it. So yeah. It happens. Yep, it does happen. So let's keep going and we'll be sure to wrap this thing up, put a bow on it uh, here pretty quick. All right, so we are wrapped up with kind of our last day out here and we made a lot of progress today. Yeah. We did, we did. We definitely challenged the machine, challenged ourselves, our brains, but we managed to get the entire bottom essentially rocked in. Tanner, it looks like you've, you're starting to already put your spin on things with, yeah. with the wood elements and that kind of stuff. Are you pleased with the progress? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Like I love what, what we're seeing so far. I wish we could have got the at least one of these flat rocks here just see it but I know what it's gonna look like it's just so I could see it done but I mean Ed and I designed this however long ago and it's pretty much looking exactly like what we planned for I don't think we originally talked about the block wall but to get more of a viewing area and to not take up as because if we would have put some of these big rocks in there there would be almost no space left down in there so I'm glad we did that but I mean all in all it's looking awesome so speaking of like you know you can see obviously because you have that artistic sense yeah. do you think you could take us down to your studio and you and Trevor can kind of talk through maybe some of the things that you do on kind of a micro scale of, of yeah. what we're doing here and then just kind of talk through our viewers and showing them some of the stuff that you know has obviously inspired Trevor and I yeah of course yeah is that cool you want to do that do it. let's, let's do, it. do it this is the animal room right yeah. so this is all the good stuff and this is kind of what I know Trevor's been clamoring to see again gosh this is so awesome I'm just yeah, let's show us you know show us a tour so the way that I designed this all is it will be rows so everything's all work in progress I want you to be able to walk down here then you can walk around here and eventually I'll have it in the middle here too yeah. I don't know exactly what I might have two long tanks that you can see like a peninsula style how this one is and I want seating arrangements and stuff but my vision 
reason for all this is to really just showcase what's possible in this hobby, to really inspire people. I don't expect people, nor do I recommend that they do it to this extent, but whenever I have people over, they tend to think, oh, people have reptiles and fish. It's just like some stinky room. I mean, does it smell like anything in here? It's just us. Yeah, just us. <laughs> just us. We're working all day. <laughs> but I mean, when I have people over, they're always like, man, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. And I try to do things to a certain standard that I know I'm caring for the animals properly. And I don't know, it's, it's something I've been passionate about for my whole life. And this is the way I've said it in my videos, a dream come true. I never thought I would yeah. be doing this. And well, yeah. it's clear that, I mean, you know, I am such a novice and, and Trevor, you're, you're pretty hardcore, you know, compared to a lot of people that are kind of in our realm and in our space. But you, that attention to detail that you were just talking about, I know you have share a lot of the same things. When we took the initial tour through here, was there something that kind of spoke to you or that, that felt very similar to you and your interests? And, and just to kind of speak to that? Yeah, no, I think the whole thing just like plays together so well. It's got a flow to it. You can see the direction he's going with. And like everything is so unique, but so well designed. I think a lot of the things that he does, right, with all the rock work and this crazy artistic design within a small ecosystem transfers perfectly to what we do in ponds and even aqua gardens and the smaller things. Mm -hmm. Like it's amazing to see what he's done with such a diverse, you know, setup. It's awesome. Let's go look at like one or two in particular. Totally. All right. Yeah, let's do cool. That. Okay. So this one I think is kind of cool because it's a lot of the stuff that you'll hear Ed talk about. And I've been incorporating it into fish tanks for years and it's something that not a lot of people do. It's starting to become more popular, but really including these riparian plants that are growing up out of the top. You know, they're really, you don't need a filter on the tank with these types of plants, but I just have it to get a little bit of circulation in there. But this, these are filtering the tank and the biological processes going on down in the substrate. So it's natural. It's using kind of some of the stuff that you guys do. This one over here is doing a similar type of thing. Although I have it rigged up so that this is a dripping feature. So it keeps all these plants hydrated up in here. We got the little frog one. Well, similar, you know, you've got oxygen exchange happening every time there's dripping and right. plants, like you said, are pulling nutrients. It's kind of like our wetland filter and what we do with our pond. Right. And so kind of just, I think as Greg says, letting mother nature do the work, so to speak. I set these up in a way to where when I told them I only have to maintain it about three hours every other week and they're kind of surprised by that. But it's just because of the way that I set things up, all the plants, all the different biological processes that I implement into the design itself. It makes it very easy to maintain mm -hmm. all this stuff. So, you know, doing it for these at this point, well over 22 years, you know, you, you learn how to make it easier to care for so that you could have all this stuff. Well, it's cool, right? Like to see ecosystems on a much smaller scale than what we're creating in your backyard. I think that's where we're so connected in a lot of different ways, right, Tanner, with what you're doing, what you're incredibly successful at, talented, passionate about, really falls along the same vein as what we're doing at Aquascape. I think at the end of the day, we tend to think of, there's the aquarium hobby, there's a pond, be the Aquascape garden, you know, there's all these different hobbies within nature, but I always just tend to think it's just nature design. Mm -hmm. So ponds are nature design, aquariums are nature design, and it's all the same thing, because if you understand the principles of this and the biological processes that are going on, and obviously there's technical know-how with materials and different things like that that you really only gain from experience or being mentored by somebody but it all kind of ties together so like I started making this stuff so when I started making my own DIY ponds obviously I struggled with digging the holes and maybe getting things level and moving the rocks properly and whatnot but I knew what I was doing because I've done similar things within these I've seen videos and stuff and I mean the pond we're doing I wouldn't have been able to do it myself because I don't have the equipment to move these huge rocks or whatever but in theory I could have done it just like you guys probably could take the principles of a pond and make something like this. There's just nuance in between to master the thing. Which is exactly what you did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so cool. I mean, I could sit down here and just like stare, you know, at all of the different systems that you have and they all have their own personality, right? With yeah. the way you've designed them, much like what we do in people's backyards, what you're doing at the store, at your desk. And it's just so cool to see a lot of this stuff happen. Guys, thank you so much, Tanner. Obviously, thank you for bringing us down yeah. here into your home and sharing it with us. So, Brian, back to you.
Do I look hot and sweaty? Oh my God. I don't know if you guys know what it's like to work in a hundred degree temperature with a hundred percent humidity, but it's a lot like this. <laughs> like you stuck your finger into an electrical outlet. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys, I thought it'd be a good time to get a little bit of water. More importantly, let's go check on Trevor over in the retail store. He's working on those patio bowls. I know he's been super inspired by Tanner over there with Surper. So let's go see what Trevor's up to. Hey guys, it's Trevor with Aquascape. You guys had just saw what Tanner, myself, and Chris were looking at over in Tanner's amazing gallery. And I thought I'd come into our retail store at Aqualand and kind of show you the different varieties of things that Chris and I were kind of talking about and relating to all of Tanner's different products. So I guess over here, we'll start with our original patio pot. So this is kind of just a bowl that basically can house fish, plants, you can kind of scape it, do rock work, all that cool stuff. Kind of what Tanner does, but it's a great way to get into living the Aquascape lifestyle. So this is a very good entryway, a little bit cheaper than doing a pond if you're not really sure what you want to do to start. So that's probably the first and biggest option that we have. We have this in a large version, and then we also have a medium version. So the other thing that's really cool that we have that I personally really like is our Aqua Garden. So over here, we've got a mini version, right? So this is basically a desktop size. We have this size, and then we also have a larger size that was the original version. So the cool thing about these is it's a basically all-in-one system, and it uses the same components as a natural ecosystem. So you're taking a little pump that pumps water through this this little trough right here and it has rocks gravel and then you have plant work and whatnot in there too so that is your filtration system and it's all nice and compact in a small version so the cool thing that i really like about these is you can get crazy with them and customize them so i'll take you guys over here and we'll check out what i just did with the inspiration from tanner's gallery So right here, I have my aqua garden that I just skated. This was all taken from inspiration that Tanner had in his gallery. And I just went crazy with all the pond plants that we had outside. I've got a bunch of rock work in here. There's waterfalls, moss, and then there's even some foam in there. So it's really the same things that we do with ecosystem ponds, except on a smaller scale. If you guys are interested in this, go on our website, check it out, or even better, come into our retail store in St. Charles, Illinois, and check out all these different features that we have around here displaying this amazing garden. That was one crazy week. And I think I say that all the time, but it's amazing to me, even after all of these years, all the moving parts that Aquascape has going on. And that's just in our local department, right? For Team Aquascape. Imagine if we're busy, what the rest of that company is doing. Huge shout out to Tanner, Ed, Chris, all the guys that helped him out there. Ed, Chris, you put the team like that together. Of course, you're gonna get some incredible work done. We're still out here. Well, I'm still out here. <laughs> like, it's it's hot. I sent everybody home. I set up a tent. I set up a little mister. And I've got my saws. And I'm just cutting some stuff behind me. So we're still out here plugging away on this project. Having fun. Last thing. And this is so important. Don't forget the pond tour. September 23rd, 24th. If uh, you don't live in the Chicagoland area, get a flight out here. If you're close, drive out here. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be cooler because it's late September. It's a whole month from now. Make sure you make the commute down here. Uh, check out the link below to get your tickets and uh, we'll see you guys next week. You know what to do. Tell your friends, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow or next Sunday, I meant. Yeah, it's so hot. It's just so hot. Brain's like messed up. Ha, ha, ha.